Hi, I'm Carolyn Finney, and I'm the City Kids Minister at City on a Hill Community Church. And today I'm going to do a short little devotional with you. And um, it's going to be focused on our behavior again. And I, I just want to talk about how for our parents, this is such a wonderful opportunity we've been given to start modeling a Christian um, response that we would like to see from our children during times of adversity. Because we're being forced to spend um, all of our time together and all of our outside events have been canceled and everything, we're just all kind of there together. And what better time if you haven't been already implementing um, a Christian household routines and prayer and scripture reading and all that. This is a great time to introduce that and to um, start incorporating that into your daily routine. So once we get out of this, once we get past this, it's it's just already a part of your nature and you can keep that up. Um, you know, this kind of thing doesn't happen all the time. That's why it's called a pandemic, you know. And so the time that you are spending with your children right now is going to be very memorable. Um, I know back when 9-11 happened, I was in fourth grade and I still remember that like that was yesterday. And that's probably the effect that something that's gonna have on our kids today for this COVID-19 thing. They're gonna remember this time and the time that they did at home learning. They're gonna remember this. And so this time that you're spending with them is going to be very memorable to them. So what better chance to start implementing Christian routines into their daily life. And so one verse that um, spoke out to me when I was thinking about this was Deuteronomy 6, 7, where it's talking about the commandments. It says, oppress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So we should be talking about Jesus and about God all the time. Any opportunity, just bring him up. You know, um, just let it be secondhand nature just to talk about him all the time in your home. You know, um, we need to make sure that we're modeling prayer, a prayerful life, modeling the, a quiet time, you know, that you have a time set aside where you just are with the Lord. And then, you know, modeling prayer for your children throughout the day, um, before you eat, before you go to bed, right when you wake up, to start modeling prayer and just make that a habit for them and for yourself. If, you, if you're not in the habit of praying, then start. Great opportunity to start implementing good habits right now. Um, same thing with reading scripture. Model model it. You have to model it. So you need to be reading scripture. You need to be quoting scripture. That's even better um, because then you don't need to have a Bible with you. Just right when the occasion happens and you can start spouting off Bible verses, even better. Um, and read scripture together. You know, if you don't have a regular routine of um, depending on how old your child is, but even you could probably do this when they're teenagers too, you know, um, right before they go to bed, read with them, you know, um, read some Bible verses with them, make that a family time where you can read together and then pray and then go to sleep. Um, so if you don't have a regular routine, especially if you have a younger child, I highly encourage that you read before bed anyway, <laughs> as a part of your bedtime routine. Um, but read the Bible together and then pray together and then have them go to sleep. And then the last thing is modeling thankfulness throughout the day. And I know that during this time when we're all cooped up in the house, it can be really stressful and things can come up and you can get frustrated and it's hard to keep all that in check all the time. But if you can just continue to model thankfulness to God and thankfulness for the things that you have and rather focus on what you do have rather than what you don't have, um, that can make everything, your attitude a lot better. Um, it will help teach your child to always try to look on the bright side of things and just always bring it back to God of, well, you know, I'm thankful for this because he gave us this and just try to model thankfulness. And that becomes a part of their, um, they're a part of their heart and their nature as well. The last thing I want to talk about, um, is on our city kids page, we're going to be posting out, um, things throughout the week of strategies and tips on just how to talk to your child that they are struggling with anxiety during this time. Um, some days it's going to be more geared towards preschool. Some days it's going to be more geared towards elementary school kids. Um, but I just wanted to give you some general tips that will help because it all varies from age to age and situation to situation and gender. There's a lot of things that um, contribute to a child's anxiety and how you should handle that. Um, and if you want more information on that, 
I can help you with that or I can get you in touch with someone that can help you if it's um, out of my league per se. Um, but some just general things that you should keep in mind when you're talking to your child about anxiety, because you should, if they're starting to show or exhibit signs of anxiety. And if you don't know what those are, ask me, I can tell you, or just Google it. It's really easy. Um, but you probably, if you know your child well, you'll be able to start recognizing their signs of uncomfortableness and anxiety. First thing is, is you have to be calm because children <laughs> will mimic your air. So if you are... are <laughs> not being calm, if you are anxious, they're going to mirror that. They're going to sense that. They're going to act that way. Um, when parents drop off their children, I remember, you know, on the first day of school, there's the parents that uh, are really nervous to let go of their child and to let them come into class. And those kids usually have a hard time coming into my class. Then you have the parent that's like, oh, bye, baby. You're going to have such a great day at school. It's going to be wonderful. Meet your new teacher. You're going to have fun. Maybe they're scared at first, but then as soon as their parent leaves, they're happy. And it's really about your energy and how you're setting up the stage for them. Are you mimicking the air that you want them to have? It's all about modeling. They see it. They're going to exhibit the behavior that they are being shown all the time. Um, so make sure that you have your anxiety in check when you talk to them. Be calm and um, just really listen to them instead of, you know, thinking about the things that you're going to say listen to them first and validate their feelings but there's a difference between validating and um agreeing with them so you know tell them it's okay to be anxious it's okay to feel these feelings but you can overcome these feelings because we don't want to um try to just take away our child's anxiety or dismiss them we rather need to give them coping strategies because there's going to come a time when you're not around anymore when they're going to have to face their anxieties on their own and they need to be able to deal with them because you're not going to be able to take them away. And so rather than pretending like they don't exist or trying to take them away for them or not acknowledging them, they need to have strategies in place, start learning those at a young age so they know how to, you know, self-regulate their emotions later in life. And so um, if you need strategies or help on that more specifically, I can definitely help you out with that, especially if you have a child that is um, probably seven and under. <laughs> um, also, when you're talking specifically about the coronavirus, make sure you're giving them facts. Don't be too, <laughs> too open about the information that you're giving. You need to make sure that you're giving facts and be careful about the amount of media that you let in and what media you let in. Um, really regulate that and control that and just be really honest with them. You also, um, I remember this was something that my parents would do with me is always have actionable steps to take towards that anxiety that had to do with that anxiety. So like for the virus, um, okay, well, what can we control? Well, we can control the fact that we wash our hands. We need to wash our hands for 20 seconds. We need, we can control the fact that we're staying in our house, that we're not going out and playing. You know, what can we control in this situation? And how are we going to overcome the situation? You know, talk about the things that you can do and how you can handle it. And another thing is, um, you know, turning to God. And that's probably one of the most important things you can teach them is pointing out verses in the Bible and praying together. And that all goes back to modeling that because they're not going, that's going to be nothing to them if you're not showing them that, if you're not modeling that behavior for them. So those are just a few general things. <laughs> if your child is exhibiting some anxiety, just things to keep in mind. If you need more resources or um, ideas or strategies or anything like that, um, you can always reach out to me and I will help you or I will get you in touch with someone that can help you. Um, Two verses I want to end with, and I'm sure you've heard this one a lot during this time, but it's a good one. There's a reason why you keep hearing it. Um, Philippians 4, 6 or 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's a great verse to share with your child as well. And then this last one um, stuck out to me too when I was trying to plan this out. Um, it has to do with peace and how the peace that we get from God isn't the peace that the world is going to give us. So the peace that we have in the facts of knowing 
um, how to prevent this COVID-19 from getting worse and the steps that we can take to get it to stop spreading is in the same piece that God is going to give us. And that's because it's a different type of peace. And it tells us that in John 14, 27, peace I leave you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So I want to end on that note and just know if you ever need any help or any encouragement or any resources or strategies, especially if you have um, a younger child, please reach out to me and let me know and I will um, get you the resources and help that you need. Thank you.